Polonia level audition excerpt for the flute section in the Houston Youth Symphony, and that was your excerpt from Verdi's Overture to the Sicilian Vespers. There is a lot to pay attention to in this short section of music from a beautiful moment in this overture to Verdi's great opera, and I just want to give you a few tips to help you prepare uh, for the recording you'll make for your audition soon. Obviously, as it says here on your audition sheet, the judges will be uh, paying close attention to your breath support, clear articulation, intonation, and musicality, as well as your use of vibrato and tonguing. Okay, so when you're getting ready to begin your work on this excerpt, as I said in the other videos, the most important thing you can do is make sure that you have a good breathing plan. This is not only going to help you know how you can create your phrase, how you can use your air speed to create your dynamics and your air energy as you're playing the articulated passages, but it will also help you to know how your phrase is going to be structured. Where are we leading to? Where is the music taking us? And where is your musical intention leading your listener? Right away from the beginning, in this first section of music, we have beautiful legato phrases, really grand uh, crescendos and diminuendos, as well as accents on different notes. So we want to make sure not only is our breathing clear, that our, but that our articulation and the structure for our phrase is also very obvious. Right away, we have two bars that are slurred with a great crescendo, culminating in an accented high F sharp and a diminuendo. All right, so we want to make sure that our articulation is ready, our tongue is always ready to give a clear start to all of these notes. There's a similar phrase that comes right after it with an accent on the B natural as well as a diminuendo underneath. Make sure that these things are very obvious so that your listener doesn't have to wonder, was that really a crescendo? Was that really a staccato? Was that really an accent? So that everything comes through crystal clear. Sandi when they're marked underneath the notes, as well as you have a fermata that is marked in the measure before J. Make sure that we hear an elongated high G sharp. This is a tricky passage because they are high notes and it is marked at a soft dynamic that's supposed to come and go as you play. So make sure that your embouchure is really set, that you are playing in tune. Always practice with your tuner, with your drone. This is in the key of E major, so I might put my drone either on E or on B, the, the root as well as the fifth, to make sure that the intervals are all very secure. Make sure that your breath happens in time and when it's inside the phrase, as we have a good section of this music where no rests are printed. So you want to make sure that every time you take a breath, you don't lose time. You might think about practicing this section with your metronome on whole notes, so that you can make sure that as you play along, you're not getting behind, you're also not rushing ahead. This is very easy to do, especially when we're playing in a register that is known for cracking. There are a lot of F sharps, there are a lot of E naturals, so you want to make sure that you have practiced those thoroughly. A nice trick for practicing those upper high notes is to play a harmonic. Sometimes, if you're playing a passage that has a high F sharp, you might finger the low F sharp, And same with the E. Another alternate harmonic fingering is to use B natural and A natural. The notes will be, of course, flat, but what it does is it forces you to blow your air in exactly the right spot to make sure that the note speaks clearly. Throwing in harmonics like these, especially for the Sforzando accented G sharp, uh, in the fourth measure before J can really help make sure also that your G sharp is in the right place. Right, so that was using the low G sharp alternate fingering. Another option is C sharp open uh, with no fingers. The next section at J, also a lot of information. We have a lot of 
staccato notes, we have accented notes, and then halfway through we start a crescendo that leads us to playing the same music up the octave, okay? This is a tricky passage, it's not easy at all, be careful not to push the instrument. If we are playing in this middle register and pushing very hard with our air, the pitch is going to rise, especially when we're dealing with these C-sharps and D-sharps, tricky notes to play in tune, and also tricky notes to not crack. My tip is to practice this section of music all slurred from the beginning. Make sure that every note that speaks is ringing and resonant so that when you add your tongue to the sound, it brings great clarity to an already beautiful instrument. You want to make sure that you are finding that brilliant energy as you play within a pianissimo sound, then grow to a piano sound, and then crescendo into your brilliant forte sound, ending in fortissimo. When we're practicing this passage up the octave, I suggest the same thing, changing out those F sharps, G sharps, and E's for your alternate harmonic fingerings. This can really help make sure that when you're in the heat of the moment in your recording, that every note speaks perfectly clearly. Overblowing those notes while slurring, and then doing the same thing while articulating. You can really make sure, again, that when you're playing at tempo, we have an accurate performance. sure that our intonation in this passage is secure as well. Make sure that you practice this when slurred using a drone or a tuner all through the quick notes and then when you're playing the short staccato notes record yourself and listen back and make sure that it actually sounds in tune. It can be hard while playing the flute to listen accurately to where your pitch is and you want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward when you're making your audition tape. There's a lot of information here. Make sure you pay attention to your dynamics, not only your articulation and breathing. The dynamics are what makes this piece have the energy that it does. Verdi is the king of the slow uh, build from pianissimo to forte, and all throughout this excerpt, that is very, very much his intention. Make sure that we hear those accents where they're printed in the fast passage. It tends to be on the C sharps and the D sharps in these phrases, so you don't want to leave those out either. Simil uh, uh, one last thing as we're preparing for this excerpt, the trills might want to get in the way. I wouldn't worry about fitting in too many wiggles. Oftentimes we can get held back trying to play a lot of notes, and this might actually hurt you in terms of getting behind the beat. One or two will be plenty, especially at speed. For example, or maybe two might be too many. Good luck as you're preparing for your audition, and I hope this was helpful for you.